So what is attrition bias and how do we control for such bias in research? Attrition bias, also commonly known as loss to follow-up, is an unequal loss of participants from a randomised controlled trial. This can occur for a number of reasons, including unsatisfactory treatment, undesirable side effects, in severe cases death, and participants not, not complying to their assigned group. Let's say we have 20 participants assigned to a study. They're randomly allocated 10 to each group, an intervention group and a control group. However, at the end of the study, 10 people remain in the control group, but only 8 remain in the intervention group. This unequal loss of participants can lead to attrition bias, and if not controlled for, can lead to inaccurate research findings, usually in the favour of the intervention being tested. Without the data from the two missing participants, it is difficult for researchers to accurately measure if an intervention is more effective than a control. Let's look at an example. 8 out of 10 people in the control group reported a positive outcome, giving us a result of 80%. 7 out of the 8 remaining in the intervention group reported a positive outcome, giving us a result of 88%. Therefore, we can conclude the intervention is more effective, correct? It's not that black and white. Say we were able to capture the data of the 10 people in the intervention group and we still found only 7 reported a positive outcome. This would give us a result of 70%, which is worse than the control group. Possibly the two people who dropped out had such horrible side effects that researchers may deem these side effects so severe that they do not outweigh the positive outcomes. Or maybe the two missing participants had positive outcomes, making the result 9 out of 10 or 90%, which is still better than the control group. This is why loss of participants makes it so hard for researchers to report their findings accurately. The rule of thumb is 5% is good and more than 20% loss of participants questions the validity of a study. We can control for attrition bias through what is known as an intention to treat analysis. An intention to treat analysis analyzes participant data based on the group they were randomly assigned to, regardless of non-compliance, adherence to entry criteria, withdrawal from treatment or any other protocol deviation. An intention to treat aims to avoid overestimation of an intervention's effectiveness due to participant non-compliance.